at the end of our press conference, we will have uh, a Q&A session for everybody involved for, for any questions that you might have for John. Uh, for the media that's in attendance, if you have any special needs or one-on-one -on -one requests, uh, just get with me afterwards and we can fill those. With that, let me introduce Utah State President Stan Albrecht. Thank you, Doug. And, and again, I know it's a beautiful summer day outside and there are a lot of things competing for, for interest and time, but uh, thanks for taking time out of the day and joining us. Uh, another very, very special day for USU, for the university, for USU Athletics. Uh, where's Tim? Tim, we seem to make, be making a bit of a habit of gathering here, but uh, hopefully this will be the last time we need to do this for a while. I'm excited for all of us as we begin the next important chapter at Utah State University and with USU Athletics. Uh, change, as you all know, can be challenging, but change also provides great opportunity. And so uh, while we will greatly miss Scott and Jody Barnes, we have the opportunity to introduce to you some folks that I think you will, will thoroughly enjoy getting to know, that you will welcome as part of the, the Aggie family. Uh, it's gonna be a great, great ride. And so we appreciate those of you who have come out this morning to join us as we get this launched. Let me, let me say just a couple of things about our process. Uh, I received a, an email early this morning from Andy Hayes who graduated from Utah State in 1953 and went on to a pretty illustrious career, spent a number of years as Chief Legal Counsel for the Chicago Tribune. And Andy is kind enough to, on a fairly regular basis, send me notes advising me how to do my job better. And uh, I always appreciate those notes, but uh, the, the uh, subject line this morning was entitled, Fastest Gun in the West. And so I think Andy thought, wow, this is a process that, that moved fairly quickly. And so let me just quickly describe that process to you. You know, our, our goal was simple, uh, and we, we understood what it was going in. Uh, we wanted to, to look broadly, comprehensively uh, across the country and find the very, very best person to lead at Aggie Athletics to be a part of our senior team during the next phase of, of Utah State University. Once we had conducted that comprehensive and extensive review, we wanted to identify from the group of folks that we were looking at the right person, and then we wanted to get that person here. And I'm delighted to be able to report to you this morning that I think we've achieved all that we set out to do as we started that process. One and two, as we were, were going through that process, uh, recognize again that the individual who was selected to become the next guy to lead what we're doing at Utah State University, we, we, we knew that person would have the opportunity to build on a great foundation that was put in place by, by Randy Spetman and Scott Barnes. And so we weren't looking to fix something. We weren't saying there are lots of problems, we need to find someone who can come in and do a fix-it job. We're in a really good place. And so we wanted someone who could come and recognize that foundation, but then be in a place to really take us to a next level. We were gratified as we began this process by the level of, of interest. Uh, we had lots of folks who wanted this job. And we had lots of folks who were really prepared and brought exceptional credentials. Uh, and so it wasn't a matter of, of, of our not having a wealth of talent individuals who wanted to be part of the Utah State University system, knowing the, the exciting things that were happening here. And, and to be really honest, and my compliments to those folks that we did bring in for interviews, uh, when I had the assignment to make some very difficult calls and, and indicate we were going different directions, I think we actually broke some hearts. And, and some of those folks said, you know, I, I would have given anything to come to Utah State and be part of the Utah State team. So it was a comprehensive selection process. We did move quickly. We scoured the country. We had the right pool. We narrowed it down to the right guy, and we brought the right guy here. And so we're excited. We're excited, and we're proud of that. Uh, what did we look for? We looked for a background of, of experience, uh, broadly defined. And we, we found that. We looked for the right skill set. We looked for commitment. 
We look for someone who really did want to become a part of Utah State University, part of our team here. We look for someone who had great personal vision. Uh, we look pretty carefully at personal values, and you will see that reflected in some of the things that John will say to you in a few minutes. We, we found that as well in what you see to my left and to your right, and an absolutely wonderful supportive spouse, and uh, two little ladies who are already dressed up in, in Aggie gear and uh, ready to go forward with that, and Heather's mom and dad, who came with them from Alabama to spend this day with, or this, this week with their family. We looked for someone who really did understood that, uh, really did understand that in the Utah State model, when we talk about student athletes, student comes first. And we, again, clearly found that. We looked for someone who really did understand the emphasis that Utah State places on academic values. Someone who recognized that academically being the jewel of the crown for the conference we're in was important and something that we wanted to extend. And so I think, again, as we have gone through the process, uh, we feel really good in extending all of those values, all of those traditions, uh, a lot of excitement on our part going forward. I'm going to let John introduce his family to you rather than do that myself, but would you please join me in welcoming John Hartwell to Utah State University. Thank you, President Albrecht, and certainly it is an honor and a privilege, and I feel very blessed, as does my family, to stand before you here today as the next Vice President and Director of Athletics at Utah State University. The rich history and tradition and foundation of Aggie Athletics, and you look at, as President Albrecht mentioned, the, the two guys who I succeed, Randy Spetman and Scott Barnes, both guys who I've had the privilege of knowing on a professional basis and, and very humbled to stand here before you today and also excited uh, about the future of Aggie Athletics. Again, a very solid foundation, a rapid ascension. If you look at the last two and a half years and the history in the Mountain West Conference and I'm not a guy who's, who's a regular message board reader, but, but as I went through this process and you want to find out everything you can, uh, yes, I, I went on the message boards a couple of times and I, I know there's a, a poll out there talking about when will we win our first Mountain West Conference Championship and in what sport. Well, I'm here to tell you that on a daily basis, 24-7, 365, that John Hartwell and our entire staff and our coaching staff and our student athletes, we're gonna roll up our sleeves, we're gonna bust our tails, and we are going to win multiple Mountain West Conference championships and multiple sports, and, and very excited uh, about that going forward. And <laughs> and when you, when you talk about what you're looking for in a fit and, and values, and, and again, as, as President Albrecht alluded to, and somebody may say, and I'm sure the media, and I appreciate you all being here today as well, uh, when, when you look at this and say, why in the world would a guy who's a director of athletics in South Alabama, why are you coming to Utah? And, and I would rather turn around and say, why not? You look at what's, what's going on here, and, and two constant things that I think are, are that, I, that I'm very proud of. Some folks may say, hey, why would you say that? But two things that are consistent, whether you're in South Alabama or whether you're in Logan, Utah, family values, conservative nature, and I, I pride myself on that. And certainly, uh, you know, as we look going forward, in this athletic department, you're gonna hear me talk a lot about the family. And, and in a minute, I'm gonna introduce my immediate family who, who are my rock. But in addition, as that expands to the Utah State Athletics family and to the Utah State University family and to the Logan community, to the Cache Valley, to me, that's all part of our family. And, and as I visited with the senior leadership on campus this morning, I talked about that. Whether it's in your immediate family, whether it's in the athletics family, 
whether it's the university family, you know, there are dynamics every day. But you know what, if you're all on the same page, which we are going to be, you can move mountains. And as we talk about those championships, those are the things that we're going to do. I, I will have a meeting tomorrow morning with our full uh, staff and, and coaches. And one of the things I want to make sure is that every day folks get up and, ex and are excited and engaged. And when they pull into their parking spot in the morning, they've got a, one, they've got a smile on their face because they're happy about what they're doing. And two, what can I do today to move the needle on Utah State University athletics? And I, I think those, with those components, we can accomplish anything. And I'm not just talking about being a preeminent athletics department in the state of Utah and the Mountain West. But I promise you, if we take care of those two things from a national perspective, it will happen. And, and again, we'll be very engaged in doing that. But those family values and that core and that relationship will be very, very important to us moving forward. And, and again, I know that's something that uh, Scott and Randy before him set out there, and certainly we will continue to, to do that. I do want to take a, a minute uh, just to reflect a little bit, uh, and, and President Albrecht talked about this, but to certainly thank him for this opportunity, for the committee, for Ron Gibson, who I know is halfway around the world today, but certainly uh, enjoyed getting to visit with him the other day. With Jim Lobb, thank you so much. Uh, Sydney, who sat in on the, uh, on the interview the other day, I, I told Heather when I got back to Troy, I said, you know what, I sat down with those four folks and I felt so at ease and so comfortable in the chemistry there. I said, if this is an indication of where we're going, we, we are going to move mountains. And I know folks, uh, being here in the mountain area, that may be a little cliche, but I, I really feel like that, uh, that the momentum that's already there and what we will continue to build on are very excited about. Uh, next, I, I would like to, to take a couple of minutes to talk about my family and uh, certainly first and foremost uh, to introduce my wife, Heather, because she is certainly the rock of our family. She is a, a tremendous, tremendous partner, uh, teammate, all of the above. She is the rock of our family. Uh, you, you'll see her actively engaged. Uh, she, she takes the role of an AD's wife uh, to another level. She will be actively involved not only in athletics and then in the community and the university, uh, but, but a huge proponent and, and is excited uh, to join the Aggie family as well. Uh, I, I have a 23-year-old son who unfortunately, uh, due to work commitments, uh, is not able to be here. He graduated last May from Vanderbilt and works for Deloitte Consulting. He's, on a, he's based out of Atlanta, but he, uh, he's on a project in Dallas right now and is taking his lunch hour to watch this uh, live on, on stream. So Hunter, uh, regards to you and, and you all will get a chance to meet him. Uh, and excited, uh, he's very excited about it as well. My two daughters, I'll introduce first three-year-old Madison, who I think is over there on mom's phone to keep her from, from, uh, uh, from screaming out. Oh, there she is, she's talking a little bit, uh, but, but certainly uh, love her. She actually just turned three, she actually turned three last Thursday on the day that I was interviewing in Salt Lake City. So uh, uh, that's a birthday present for you, Madison, but they're very excited. And uh, last but not least, as my wife likes to refer to her, or, or she calls uh, Lauren, our six-year-old, Little John sometimes, or when she's not calling her that, she calls her social chairman because she will not be shy at all. And in fact, she actually wants to come up here and say something really quick. So come on, Lauren, come up here. And I'll have to preface this a little bit. Uh, I, I was up early this morning uh, trying to brush up on my comments that I was going to make and, and sitting at the desk in the hotel. And, and Lauren was up early as well. And she took a break from uh, what was it, Jake and the Neverland Pirates or the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse on Disney to come see what dad was doing. And I was writing down a few notes. And she goes, well, dad, I want to write a speech too. So she has on her note notepad here what she wants to say. So go ahead, make sure you speak into the microphone and say it loud, Lauren. It is an honor to be an, an Aggie. I'm an Aggie. Go Aggies. <laughs> Thank you. 
Love you. So she was excited about the opportunity, as is our entire family, and I, I would certainly be remiss, and, and uh, President Albrecht re referred to them as well, but my in-laws, uh, Dr. Jim and, and Ginger Seal are here, and uh, certainly uh, they are helping us uh, uh, corral the two little ones as, as you will see them running around. But, but again, certainly uh, excited to be here. I do want to talk a little bit. Uh, uh, about philosophies as well in terms uh, of athletics and it, as it relates to student athletes. And I, I told the, the senior staff this morning, whether you're in athletics, whether you're in academics, whether you're on the development side of our campus, what we can never lose sight of is that the reason we are employed is for our students. And as it relates to athletics, it's our student athletes. We've got to make sure that that is our number one focus again, 24 seven, and to provide all of the resources and opportunities and tools to allow them to be successful, first of all, in the classroom. And, and yes, there's a reason why they're called student athletes and not athlete students. We're gonna make sure that we get it done in the classroom. And, and as I look through the APR numbers and the GSR rates, that's certainly a tradition here at Utah State University that we will continue and continue. The bar is raised very high, but we will continue to elevate that bar. We'll make sure that we're gonna get it done in the classroom. Number two, in terms of on the field of play, yes, we are going to win. If winning were not so important, we would not spend so much money, nor would any university in this country spend so much money on nice scoreboards. Winning is important. We are going to win. But I put a caveat to that. We're going to win the right way. We're not going to cut corners. We're going to do things properly from a compliance standpoint. Again, back to academics. We're going to emphasize academics first. And that is first and foremost. The third component there, so you've got academics, you've got athletics, the third component is what I like to call the game of life. You hear it referred to as life skills, social skills. That's something that's vitally important that we instill in our student athletes. And I know we've, we've done it here and we'll continue to do it, make it an emphasis so that our young men and women who matriculate through our athletic department and get degrees from here and are alums that they are fine represent that one they can can create a tremendous living for themselves but also they're fine representatives of our university and three that they will look back upon their years here as student athletes as some of the best of their lives and that creates a, an atmosphere where those folks are apt to give back to us because yes that that's a whole nother side of it development uh, with my business background, yes, I am a recovering CPA. I, you know, before I ever got into the athletics realm, uh, I was a, a CPA in public practice. So the, the financial end of things is very important. And uh, as President Albrecht and I were talking this morning, if you don't think that big time college athletics is not an arms race, you're kidding yourself. But what we've got to do is be smart about how we go about that arms race. Yes, we've got to continue having both short-term vision and getting projects done, but a long-term vision and saying, hey, how can we stay on the cutting edge from a recruiting standpoint? The term I like to use is the wow factor. We've got to make sure that in all of our facilities, we've got the wow factor. Because like it or not, 17, 18-year-old kids who are coming to our campus as prospects We've got to make sure when they leave or when they see our facilities and certainly when they go back home or they go to, to folks we're recruiting against, they say, man, those facilities at Utah State, certainly you sit here in the, in the SD Center, uh, a tremendous venue. You look at the progress uh, in the stadium, tremendous. We've got to make sure that we stay on that cutting edge. And yes, that takes dollars and cents. But my job and our job as an athletics department will be to continue to cultivate and increase those external funding sources because the university is, is tremendous. We, we certainly appreciate that support. But if we are going to continue to do this, which we are going to do, 
not just to stay level, but to stay ahead of folks, we've got to continue to to elevate those external funding sources, which uh, you know, Kent and I will be having conversation very, very shortly uh, about trying to continue to grow those external funding sources. So we're excited about that. Uh, you know, you look at some of the other things going on uh, in the landscape of college athletics, the change of governance, you know, the Power Five. Uh, we've got to stay on top of things and, and, and current in terms of how we deal with that. And, and, you know, I've been in situations before. I've been fortunate enough to be at some tremendous universities. My years at the University of Mississippi, uh, almost 10 years there, and people say, well, gosh, you were, you were at Ole Miss. You know, they're, in, they're on that SEC train, and the money truck just drops off, you know, uh, millions of dollars on a weekly basis almost. Well, it, they were fortunate to be a part of the SEC, but if you look from a budget perspective, the lower tier of the SEC, Certainly my time at Troy in the shadows of Auburn and Alabama, you know, you have to be creative and think, out, think outside the box. We will continue to have to do that from a revenue generation standpoint. But the other thing, and, and Matt and I had this conversation uh, a couple of weeks ago, the way I like to operate is, and, and hear me out on this, is with a little chip on the shoulder. And I, I kind of like, our staff, our student athletes to operate with a little chip on the shoulder. No, our budget may not be as large as University of Utah's, but you know what? We are going to find ways not only to compete, but to beat them. And with all of the big boys in terms of going out, we're going to be creative. We're going to be smart in how we do things. We're going to you know, look at expenditures, make sure we do things the right way, and continue to grow budgets so that we, again, can give our coaches and staff and student athletes the tools that they need to be successful and to win. So you guys will hear a lot more about philosophies as we go forward and certainly want to open it up uh, to, to questions. But again, we are so excited to be here. Uh, it is great to be a Utah State University Aggie, and our family looks forward to getting here full time. Uh, like I said, we, we will be here through the rest of the week and then come back on a permanent basis in, in mid-July and certainly looking forward to getting to know all of you. And one of the things that you will find uh, about uh, my mode of operation, transparency, you're going to be able to see everything that we're doing because I think that's important. And when you go back to donors, uh, that's important because I think when people give to your program, it's like somebody investing in the stock market. People are not going to invest in things that they know nothing about or don't have a level of confidence about the leadership and the vision and the direction a program is going. And we are going to make sure that all of those things are very clear and that there's evidence, one, of a long-term plan, two, that we are doing things the right way, and three, that we are gonna be successful. So we, we are going to do those things. It's great to be here and we are just so excited and blessed again. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions for John. I'm gonna grab some water. John, you mentioned uh, a business background several years before you got into academic athletic administration, what was the thinking that led to you wanting to go that way with your professional life? Great question, because it, it was a, a total 180 change. Actually, uh, and I'll give a, a brief recap, and you guys uh, see this in the bio, but when I graduated from the, uh, I played basketball at the Citadel, and the guy that was my coach there is a guy named Les Robinson, and Les succeeded Jim Balvano as the head coach at North Carolina State, and then he went from being the head coach there to the athletic director at North Carolina State. So I spent my first four and a half years out of school, I'll date myself a little bit, I actually started with Ernst & Winnie, it became Ernst & Young, spent four and a half years in public accounting, then went back to the Citadel, which was my alma mater, as the uh, director of internal audit for three years, and then had the opportunity to go into private business for a board member there, uh, and, and was the CFO of, uh, of a beverage distributor in Charleston and Hilton Head. But I'd known that, you know, I'd, 
had an inkling and, and a thought process about getting back into college athletics. But this was uh, midsummer, 1997, and Les Robinson called me one day and just like we normally do, talk once about every 10 days, which we still do. And he said, John, you know, you should really consider getting into athletic administration. He said, your financial background, the people you know in the business, your communication and people skills, you should really consider doing this. So kind of like a second father, as I'd listened to him on advice before, I, I went from uh, Charleston, moved to Atlanta, Georgia, to be the assistant AD for finance at Georgia State University about two months after they had hired Lefty Drizel as the basketball coach there, and, and took about a 50% pay cut to do it, but knew that I wanted to be in, in college athletics and had the, had the fortune to be at, at Georgia State from 1997 to 2003 when the opportunity came available at, uh, at Ole Miss and, and was there from 2003 to 2012 and, until I got the opportunity at Troy. So yeah, it, it's not your stereotypical uh, career path in athletic administration, but I will say this, what I learned in my years in public accounting as well as in private business are, are some skills that I use on a daily basis. play in to uh, accepting this job here that they had a nice jump on some of those things already? Uh, certainly when you look at, at the track history uh, of Utah State University, and again this goes back to, to what President Albrecht, the Board of Trustees, and the donors ha have done, and it's very amazing the transformation in the past three or four years when you look at gearing up to enter the Mountain West and, and then certainly the, the resources invested, not only from a facility standpoint, but also from, from a operation standpoint. Uh, and I do think uh, that Utah State University is poised to compete at that level. I mean, again, it, we've got to continue to find new external funding sources we got to be prudent with the resources that we have, think outside the box, be efficient in what we do. But, uh, and, and again, to, to have that little bit of a chip on the shoulder that, that as we all come to work every day, hey, you know, yeah, we may not have those couple of extra zeros at the end of our budgets, but you know what? We're going to find a way to get it done. We're going to find a way to compete. What are your early impressions about the differences between being the athletic director at Troy and at Utah State? You look at the, at the fan support, and Troy has a, a very strong support base, but also the main campus at Troy has 7,000 students. So it, and when you matriculate that to, to number of alums and things like that, much different environment here. It's on on a much larger scale. Uh, certainly, the engagement and passion of the alums and the donors here, and, and the the larger student body base, uh, put it on a, on a much larger scale. And, and I'm excited to be a part of that. You said you're going to bring championships here. Uh, what? specifically do you do to make that happen? Well, one of the first things that I want to do in the first 30 days time is, is to sit down individually with, with each of the head coaches and, and as well as our administrators within athletics as well and have each of them do an evaluation, a current evaluation, current state of affairs that they see in their program. And again, I'll go back to my business background, what I call a SWOT analogist. Uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And to sit down and have candid discussions with them. And, and part of that questionnaire is going to be, if you had to name the top three things, what are the three things that you need, that, that you believe you need, that will help us win championships? And again, I, I want to make sure that all of our coaches have that mindset of, of that, that we are not just going to be 
competitive in our league. We want to operate at the very top of our league because I think doing that, if we operate at the top of the Mountain West, we're going to have success on a national level as well. have on your list for um, once you get here early those first 30 days anything um, list of things you'd like to accomplish or tackle early on certainly uh, reaching out and, and visiting with, with our donors visiting with students visiting with university staff as a whole uh, and when I visited with, with the senior staff this morning I want to make sure and, and Utah State University and, and athletics have done a tremendous job of this but to make sure that Athletics, we are, we are just one function under the larger umbrella of the university. Yes, athletics may be the front porch of the university in terms of publicity, and, and we want to make sure that that's positive publicity, but we are only a component, and to make sure that everything that we do is within the, the mission of the university of advancing the university, and, and, and I think that's very important. Uh, you know sitting down, visiting with some faculty members, folks like that. The other thing, and, and you know, summer is a great time to be able to do this because you don't have any games or matches going on per se, but to delve into our whole fan experience. And I know we've got the 30 for 30 going on. I think that's tremendous. Some of those things on there are great. But a challenge, whether it's Utah State University, Florida, Tennessee, Alabama, Attendance at games is a huge challenge right now because of television, and it's a kind of a catch-22 thing. Yes, you know, uh, television contracts help pay the bills from a conference standpoint, but television contracts also cause you to play games on non-traditional dates, late start times, things like that. You combine that with the, uh, you know, being able to buy an 80-inch surround sound television to put in your living room for $1,500, and, and we've got to make sure that we do everything from a fan engagement standpoint that if somebody's in Salt Lake City and they say, you know, I don't know that I want to come to an 8.30 Friday night game because I can just sit in my living room and watch it in the comfort of my own home, we've got to make sure from a fan engagement standpoint that we do things that, you know, beyond the game, yes, sports marketing 101, winning puts butts in seats. I understand that. And that, that that will never change. However, we've got to make sure that the entertainment factor around the game itself is such that, that folks want to say, hey, man, you know, not only are they going to come, you know, to Logan to come to the games, but they're going to talk to their neighbors. Man, we, you know, you guys need to come up here to games. It's an exciting event. You know, we've got winning football going on, but it's an exciting event surrounding it as well. And not just in football, we've got to do that across the board in all of our sports. So that's something that I'm going to take some time to look at too, to make sure that our fan experience is, you know, as good, if not better than, than any other in the country. Time in this part of the country before and looking forward to winter after. That's a great question, and you, you actually prompt something that, uh, that I, I should have addressed already. So, this was December 2013, and Troy's men's basketball team played in the Gosner Invitational out here. So, Heather, Madison, and Lauren and I came out here with our men's basketball team and spent five days in December. The day we got out here, it was like 55 degrees, no snow on the ground. You know, it, it was nice, but our family was disappointed. They said, gosh, we came to Logan. We wanted to see snow. You know, we want to go up to Beaver Mountain. We want to do all this stuff. No snow. So the next morning, and we actually drove up that afternoon to Beaver Mountain, not even any snow up there, so they were disappointed. So we go to sleep that night. The next morning we wake up, there's about five inches on the ground and it's still snowing. And, and I think two days later it snowed about another eight or nine inches. But we had a tremendous five days here. And as we were leaving Logan, driving back to Salt Lake City to go to the airport, Heather turns to me in the car and goes, you know, that's really a neat place. I think I could live there. And lo and behold, as, as faith and fate 
uh, turn out, uh, you know, this opportunity is tremendous. But the other piece, and, and if she were up here, she'd tell you this, and I, I tell this secondary, that was only after two days before, and, and again, there was about 10 inches of snow on the ground, but I had her stop the car and got out and walked around the stadium a little bit. And I had met Scott, and he'd shown me some of the facilities, but even, even after that, I wanted to walk around a little bit on my own. And uh, so I get back in the car, and Heather and I are having this conversation, and I said, you know, Scott's a rising star in this business. I, you know, he's going to have other opportunities, and at some point, you know, what do you think? And she goes, who in the heck do you know at Utah State that could get you this job? So, uh, again, uh, as, uh, as fate and fortune and faith uh, uh, play into it, uh, it, we couldn't be happier than to be standing here today. Thank you all again so much, and I, I look forward to, to getting to meet and visit uh, with all of you, as does our entire family. And, and again, uh, as President Albrecht said, nice sunny day, summer day outside, and uh, we appreciate uh, everybody coming out today. So thank you very much.